What you probably didn't know when you woke up this morning, or even when you clicked on this video, is that we're going on a journey. Right now, we are taking the first step on a beautiful journey. One involving careful thought, low-level programming, and tons of learning. If you haven't guessed it already, we're taking the first steps to writing our own operating system. Now, I'm not saying that I can make it through this whole journey, but what I can promise is that I'll take you along as I make the attempt. I'll share what works and what doesn't, and if I burn out, I'm relying on you to pick up the pieces and carry the torch just a little bit further. I'm no professor, so I'm not making any discoveries here or expanding the field. I'm just dipping into technology that everyone uses every day on their phone, computers, laptops, and tablets, but very few understand. This video is all about setting up an environment for us to do our programming in. Windows is great for checking your email and writing reports, but we'll need a Linux box for the down and dirty tools we need to get this dirty job done, with or without micro. I'm sure there's a way to get this all to work on Windows too, but I'm really not interested. If you're interested, you can pick up your .NET framework and take it somewhere else, my friend. Advanced users, feel free to roll your eyes. Feel free to skip this video. If you know enough to have an opinion on my choices for technology such as Linux distros or hypervisors, you probably know enough to figure this stuff out yourself and do it your way, which coincidentally may be better than my way. For everyone else, we're going to set up our computers with a virtual machine for developing our OS. If we follow the exact same steps, with any luck, we will all run into the exact same problems, and so we can help each other out. As no educational video is complete without some PowerPoint slides, take a gander at what I threw together. Let's get through these quick. Like we already talked about, we're just going to go over real quick what a VM is and how it works, and get our own Debian virtual machine up and running. So what is a virtual machine? If you Google it, you'll get emulation of a computer system. Basically, you're just simulating access to all of the real hardware that a computer system is expecting to see. When you do this, you can install an operating system on top of that virtual hardware and have the virtual machine think that it is a physical machine. The hypervisor, which we're about to talk about, will keep track of which machine gets access to the physical hardware. This diagram helps us visualize what's actually going on. On the bottom, you have your computer as you use it every day, the host machine. This has physical memory storage and CPU resources that it uses, actual hardware. On that host machine, you have a computer program running called a hypervisor. The hypervisor is what allows the virtual machine to access the physical hardware. Then you have the guest machine. The guest machine has its own memory storage and CPU, or so it thinks, because it doesn't really know that it's a virtual machine. Instead, it interacts with the hypervisor, which manages the calls to the physical hardware. In this way, you end up with a nice sandboxed environment with a real operating system running within your existing system. In our case today, we're going to have a Debian virtual machine as our guest, VirtualBox will be our hypervisor, and Windows will be our host system. So let's jump into the process of installing our hypervisor, VirtualBox, and then installing the virtual machine on top of it. So open up your Chrome browser and just search for VirtualBox. Click right on the first result, hit the download button, Go down to Windows Toasts, and it should start downloading. I'll cut through the process because it might take a few minutes. Then launch your binary that you just downloaded. Hit Run. And next. You can change things here if you want at your own risk. For the most part, we're going to keep the defaults. Next, again, change this how you want as well. It doesn't really matter. Now, if you're doing anything online, this might kick you off. It's going to install the network interfaces for the VM. This might take a few minutes. Just let it install everything it needs to. Then you should be done. Just hit Finish, and it should open up. The next step is to download our Debian image. So just go on Google, search Debian download, click the first link, and go to the small installation image and we'll go for small CDs or USBs. Click AMD64, that's the architecture we'll use for our VM today. Pretty common one, might be the same as your host system. Once you have it downloaded, click on New VM, type in Debian for the name, keep the default memory, and create a virtual hard disk. Type in 50 gigabytes. Even if you don't have 50 gig available, it's better to have more space on this virtual hard drive because it expands as you go. So it won't take up 50 gig until you use 50 gig on the hard drive. Now launch your virtual machine and select the disk image we just downloaded from your downloads. 
This will boot the Debian installer. Most of these settings can stay as the default. American English. Keep your host name as Debian. Your domain name you can leave blank. Press continue. Set up a root password. Make sure it's something that you remember. As you can see, I kept mine pretty simple. On a real system, you'll want to use a more complex password for security, but since this is already on a system that requires a password, I usually keep it very simple for virtual machines. Similarly, you're gonna set up a user account. It could just be your first name. Once again, set up a password and make sure you don't forget it. This time for the user account, not for the root user. Select your time zone. Uh, click on use entire disk and then you can click SDA. All files in one partition and you can write changes to disk. Now there's no need to worry here because this is doing it to your virtual hard drive. It's going to confirm and double check do you want to write these changes because it could destroy things on your hard drive. Luckily we have a blank virtual hard drive so there's nothing to worry about. Anyway keep going and select settings that either are the default or maybe change the country or whatever if it works for you better. If you're in a corporate proxy you might want to set up the proxy settings um, you'll have to work with your IT team to get that to work the way you want it. Um, for software selection, select SSH server. It's good to have. Everything else can stay default. Uh, you'll want to install the Grub bootloader. And select Dev SDA as your device. That's our virtual hard drive. And now we're done. So make sure that the disk image for the uh, installer is removed. VirtualBox should do it automatically. It's good to check. Then hit continue. Your virtual machine will reboot. And now it should boot up on its own into our newly installed system. Log into your user account. And now you'll see the desktop. Let's pull up the terminal. And we can make sure everything works by echoing out a quick message. There you go, a working Linux system ready to play. Feel free to noodle around with the system, and then once you're done, just uh, close the virtual machine and select Save Machine State. This way we can jump back in quickly without having to boot all the way up. So that's all there is to it. Today we learned that a virtual machine is the emulation of a computer. There's a guest, a host, and a hypervisor. So we installed our hypervisor, VirtualBox, and a Debian VM on top of it. Now you can use Linux on your Windows computer. This will be essential in upcoming lessons. If you want to get the most out of this video, I do have one more challenge for you. Pop open your favorite browser, type in gitter.im slash pagekeysolutions and log in however you want, I prefer GitHub, and type anything there. The idea is for this to be a community for us to discuss any of these tutorials, especially the OS related ones. Thanks very much for watching this PageKey Solutions video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one.